All right, so I want to talk about normal forces um, in scenarios where the normal force is not equal to the force due to gravity. So just for lack of a better name, I want to call them abnormal normal forces. Yeah, we do. We talked about this in grade 11. But I, I find that an, enough people forget about it that it's, it's worth just bringing up again. And we touched on it yesterday as well. Again, just by way of reminder. So, so-called abnormal normal forces, there's nothing abnormal about them really. It's just that normal forces, as a rule, aren't the same as the force of gravity. It's just that somehow in grade 11, a lot of people get the notion that they are the same, and they really aren't. So, um, in earlier grades, I often uh, will talk about somebody sitting on a, a bathroom scale, like this person here who's standing on a bathroom scale, just minding their own business, trying to figure out what their weight is, and a, a jerky friend comes along, and pulls down on their arm or something like that while they're standing on that bathroom scale. Just, you know, obviously to make them feel like they're heavier than they really are. Anyway, I want, I want to take a look at the free body diagram that might arise from this, okay? So if I take a look at the person that's sitting on the bathroom scale, I know that the force due to gravity, there's a force due to gravity acting on that person. What else is acting on the person? person pulling down. Yeah, the person pulling them down. So if we have a one, <coughs> a two, call it person one and person two, then you could say that there's a force of two acting on one. And so in a simple situation where somebody pushes down on another person when they're sitting on a bathroom scale, what's another force that would be pushing on the person? On the first person, that is. Sorry, so then, yeah, normal. We have a normal force. So tell me about the magnitude of the normal force. What's the magnitude of the normal force equal to in this case? Is it FG or is it something else? Yeah, FG plus F2 on 1. Now, some people would just say, well, F normal, let's make it a new equation. I'm not going to do it. They would write F normal equals FG plus F2 on 1. I don't want to write it that way. What I would like to do is make a little note to myself. I know that this picture is equal to F net. I mean, specifically, it's F net in the y direction, but it's F net. And I could say that F net in the y direction is equal to F normal plus F2 on 1 plus Fg. Because remember, F net is equal to the sum of all the forces in the free body diagram. And now I'd say, well, in this particular situation, the person's not going anywhere. That is, they're not accelerating into, this, into the surface of the Earth, and they're not blasting off. So I can make the reasonable assumption that F net y is equal to 0. And in that case, I could say, all right, well, if I want to know what F normal is, F normal, if I isolate for Fn, is equal to F net y. <coughs> minus F2 on 1, minus Fg. And in this case, we may say that F net y is equal to 0. So we say F normal is equal to negative F2 on 1, minus Fg. And that really looks a lot like what we might have said before, that F normal was equal to F2 on 1 plus Fg. And it's true that F normal would have the same magnitude as the sum of those, but this addresses the fact that it would have the opposite direction. That's all. Okay, so it's useful to actually make use of this free body diagram, like we have been up to this point, just to, to get a, a more full picture of things. So that's something I like to talk about in grade 11. Another thing I like to talk about in grade 11 is people in elevators. And who doesn't like to talk about people in elevators? So I have somebody in an elevator here. No, they're not dying in an elevator. This isn't like a Schrodinger's elevator or anything. This is just a person that's in an elevator, okay? Because of the light? <laughs> oh, 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 I see. If it's a, like a relativistic elevator. No, no, no. It's just a person in a regular old, regular old elevator. Uh, a common elevator. Um, so what I'd like to say is that this person is in an elevator. Let's say that the, the acceleration of the elevator is 2.00 meters per second squared. Um, let's make the person, well, just for fun, let's make this uh, a person that's 50 kilograms. That seemed like a pretty reasonable mass for a human being. I don't know, why not? Now, if I think about the, the person's free body diagram, not the elevator, this is the person inside the elevator, 
I want to figure out what some of the forces might be on this person. One force on the person might be their FG. That's the force of gravity due to gravity acting on the person. What's another force that could be acting on this person? Normal force. Yeah, normal force, sure, why not? And again, that would be equal to F net for that person. That FVD is equal to the net force on the person. Now, if I wanted to figure out what the normal force is on this person, I have to go through a little bit of a process here, okay? So I could say, all right, I, I think that I can figure out FG, because I know that FG is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. And I'm pretty sure that I could come up with an equation for F net. I could say that F net is equal to mass times the acceleration of the system, which in this case, the system is just the guy. So I could say F net is equal to the person's mass, 50 kilograms, times the acceleration of the system. No, I just said 2, but I'm going to highlight that it's positive 2 meters per second squared. And let's make up positive and down negative. So we've got an acceleration of 2.00 meters per second squared. And so 2 times 50, this is nice round numbers, we'd have 100 newtons. Net force on this person. Okay, 100 newtons, or if you want to say 1.00 times, times 10 to the power of 2, you could say it that way too. Fg is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity, or 50 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And 50 times 9.81 uh, should be about 490.5. Check the math. Is, is 50 times 9.81 490.5? Sounds about right, because 0.5 of 9.81 is 4.905, right? So 490.5 newtons is the Fg value. Now the goal would be, if this was a, a grade 11 problem, but it's a good starting place for grade 12, that now the goal of this might be to find the normal force. You know, so we'll say, question mark, what is the normal force? And so uh, again, I would go about setting the F net equal to the free body diagram. F net equals F normal plus Fg. And you know, some people don't like to sub in these values at this stage. They'd prefer for you to sub in the al actual algebraic expression in there and then solve it uh, you know, in, in the equation down here, isolate for the values and all that sort of thing. And actually, that's not a bad way to do it. It's actually maybe a, a more superior way to do it because it introduces less rounding. Like I don't calculate something once, calculate it again, and then sub in those calculated values. I'd calculate it all in one go in the equation. So if you feel more comfortable with uh, not writing it out like this, but instead writing mass times acceleration in that spot, and instead writing mass times acceleration due to gravity in that spot, and then isolating the variables to get F normal by itself and then plugging in the values, it's actually a better way to do it. I'm just doing it this way so that it's maybe a little bit more clear for the conversation's sake. So if we get F normal all by itself, Fn is equal to F net minus Fg. Really this Fg value is a negative value and the F net is a positive value. It's something to keep in mind when I sub in my values. So F net being 100 point Oh, sorry, 100 newtons, not point zero, 100 newtons, minus negative 490.5 newtons gives me a total of 590.5 newtons. Okay, so we say that the normal force is 590.5 newtons. In other words, the bottom of this elevator is pushing up on this person's feet with 590.5 newtons. That's all we're really trying to say here. We're not saying that the person weighs 590.5 newtons. We're just saying what the pressure is on the, on the feet, what the contact force is. Um, what if I change this a little bit? And I don't want you to change it on your page. I just want to play this as a what if game. So what if I change this acceleration? So don't change it on your page. I'm just going to change it on mine. What if I change this acceleration to be zero? What would that do to the rest of the problem? Yeah. Yeah, the normal force would end up being the same as the gravitational force. So I want to explore what that would do mathematically. So if, as I follow it through, that would make this value be zero, which would make this value be zero, which would make this value be zero. And so the, the normal force would just be the gravitational force, 490.5 newtons. No problem. What are three situations? Give me three where the acceleration of the elevator could be zero in a real elevator scenario.
Okay, so if it's going up at a constant speed, that's one scenario. What's another scenario? Sure. Going down at a constant speed. What's another one? Yeah. So it's either stopped or it's going up at a constant speed or it's going down at a constant constant speed. And so you notice, like, when it is accelerating, our original scenario, I used to deliver newspapers in a, in a little apartment building. Well, not so little. In a little apartment building up in the northwest corner of the city when I was a little boy. I used to deliver uh, the Toronto Star, the Burlington Spec, I mean, the Hamilton Spectator, and uh, and the Sears catalog. You know, I had a, a few different routes because, hey, the guy's got to have the cash, right? Um, so what I would find is when I get in those elevators, I hit the button. That's most, mostly elderly folks. So I'd go up to, to visit the elderly folks and... Uh, often they'd ha already be waiting at the door for their paper and want to have a chit chat. Anyway, so I get into the elevator, hit the button, and kajunk! And you feel it. Because this is an older building. It's an older building, and I'd feel the kachunk in the bottom of my feet, and I would think to myself, oh, the normal force is exceeding my force of gravity magnitude, and so my knees are buckling because they're not used to it. Not really. But that's what was happening every time I hit the, the button to go to a higher floor. Every time you go to a lower floor, do you get a buckle of the knees? What happens then? Yeah, you feel a little bit lighter. And oftentimes, uh, little kids, especially little kids who aren't used to riding in elevators, especially in these older elevators that, that accelerate quickly right from the beginning, uh, they jerk to a, to a, a start. They uh, might describe butterflies. You know, they talk about getting butterflies in their tummies. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You know that little, that little fluttery feeling in your tummy when you unexpectedly jerk down? And so, yeah, the normal force would, would momentarily decrease to be less than your FG magnitude, and of course the little kid that gets the butterflies doesn't say, mommy, mommy, my, my F normal is less magnitude than my FG. They just say I have butterflies. But that's what's happening, right? Like you have that sort of, um, the floor falling out from under you sort of feeling. What's a way that I could get the normal force to be zero? So I'm talking about turning this value to zero. Getting rid of this value. Michael. Oh, if the elevator were accelerating down at 9.81 meters per second squared, yeah, there, there wouldn't be a force, or at least the, the floor wouldn't be capable of supplying a force to your feet. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, practically what that might mean is that somebody comes along and snaps the cable that's holding up your elevator. And in that case, you could have a normal force of zero. Um, alternatively, al alternatively, what if somebody put a rocket engine on the top of the elevator and decided to, you know, blast it downwards? We put a couple rocket engines on the top of this elevator and it blasts downwards. Would you feel any normal force then? Well, if it was blasting so that it was accelerating at greater than 9.81 meters per second squared, would you feel a normal force then? No, not on your feet. I mean, in a few seconds you might feel it on your head because the top of the elevator would crash into you, right? Because there's nothing, as long as you're not strapped into this elevator, there's nothing keeping you stuck to the floor. Um, you're going to feel normal on your head in a second. But there are different scenarios you can work up in elevators. And hopefully, you never experience the latter of our scenarios. Hopefully, you only ever experience the, you know, the, the, the first few scenarios. But it's possible. Yes, Ali. So, if the acceleration downwards is 9.1 meters, that's the only time that you come off the floor? Yeah, if the acceleration of the, of the elevator is 9.81, or the, the environment that you find yourself in, let's call it, uh, is accelerating uh, downwards at greater than the acceleration due to gravity, those, that's the time when you'd feel no pressure on your feet. But then you'd be in free fall, they say. So if your elevator's ever in free fall, you probably have bigger problems than just not being able to feel the floor. Like, you know, you better, you know that the, the uh, survivor's handbooks always say that you should lie down flat on the floor of an elevator so that the, uh, you know, the, the pressure as you crash to your almost certain death is, is spread out over your whole body. So if you ever do find yourself in free fall, quickly lie down on the floor, keep your wits about you, and maybe you'll come out of it alive to tell the story, okay? But other than that, it's just an interesting thing to talk about.